Good morning. Good morning. It is Saturday, February the 10th. We're going to go straight into the King James Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 41. And if you remember that Joseph had interpreted the dreams of the chief baker and the chief butler, and the chief butler survived and uh, was reinstated, and the chief baker was hanged. So we go into 41. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by a river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and the flesh, lean-fleshed kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamt the, dreamt the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, I'm going to sneeze, sorry. <laughs> seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and he called for all the magicians of Egypt, and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto the Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler, now he speaks up, unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night. I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was with us a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream did he interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to, it, to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto the Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. I need to underline that. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of a river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kine, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for bald badness. And the lean and ill-favored kine did eat up the first seven fat kine. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good, and behold, seven ear, withered, thin, and blasted, with the east wind, sprang up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I was told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto the Pharaoh, The dream of the Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind 
are seven years. And the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. For it shall be very grievous. And for that dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. Because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. Well, now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Wow. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Saphanath Paneah, and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potipera, priest of On. And Joseph went out all over the land of Egypt. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, he laid up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. And Joseph's, and unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potpera, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the firstborn Manasseh, for God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteousness was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. 
And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came to Egypt, to Joseph, to buy corn, because that famine was so sore in all the lands. Wow, that's a big chapter. A lot of things have happened in this chapter. So we'll go back to the beginning. And finally, finally, the head butler remembers Joseph. Now, you can question as to, you know, why he waited so long and so on and so forth. You would probably say that the butler still wanted to gain favor in the Pharaoh's eyes. And he says, ah, I, I know somebody that can help you. So the timing was right for him. But Joseph still languished two more years in prison. And then he was given his chance. Then the opportunity that God had created for him, because God had put that dream into the Pharaoh's mind. God was telling him a message about what was to happen about the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine. This is God created. But Joseph had to be obedient and stand by and wait for God's timing. And when his timing was right, when God had everything in place, Joseph was released and all the good stuff happened. Now the interpretation is pretty straightforward. We don't have to go into that. But what struck me was when the Pharaoh said that he and Pharaoh said unto his servants, this is in uh, verse 38, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? This is the Pharaoh of Egypt talking about the Spirit of God. Of course, he had Joseph in mind because, of, you know, he was saying, who, who, you know, Who's better qualified? This man has the Spirit of God on him. But Pharaoh recognized that. You know, we look at Egypt and the Pharaohs and, and think of, you know, all sorts of gods and dynasties and all sorts of things going on. But this Pharaoh, and I guess someone can tell me which Pharaoh it was. I, I'm, I'm just not going to look it up. I, I think we probably know from historical records. But this Pharaoh recognized that Joseph had the Spirit of God. Not of a God, God. That's pretty powerful. Because Pharaoh was recognizing the fact that his dream had come from God and that this man, Joseph, was able to interpret it, a man from God. So everything, again, meshes together. It's great, isn't it? The beauty of how God works things out and what he does. Not only that, but Joseph was given a wife and she gave him two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim? Yeah, Ephraim. And he forgot all his toil and all my father's house. So for the time being, Joseph has put all that behind him. And isn't that what God tells us to do? to put all the bad stuff behind us, to forget it. Don't let it influence your life. You know, don't let it rule your life. Other man's sins against you, your own sins, forgive and forget, put it behind you. And then what happens? Joseph is the ruler of Egypt. Only Pharaoh is above him, but Joseph He's in charge. What Joseph says, Pharaoh said, do. You know, when Joseph says jump, the people say how high. <laughs> That's the power of God. 
We don't have a clue what's in store for us. I'm not saying we're all Josephs. This is a story that Jesus, uh, that God has given us, was recorded in Genesis, and it was a historical fact. It took place. It is true. But he wanted us to know it. He wanted us to know that there is no limit to what God can do if you let him. If you don't get ahead of him, there's no limit to what he can do. He can't do good things in your life if you keep circumventing him. This story of Joseph is all about that. It's being patient and waiting for God. Beautiful story. Beautiful story. Not over yet, is it? We all know what happens, but, you know, it's something to look forward to for tomorrow's reading. Have a great day. It's supposed to be warm again today, but there's no bright sunshine. It's cloudy, so it kind of still feels kind of cold out there, but it is warm, and it's uh, another God-given day. Another God-given day. Thank you. Having these temperatures in the middle of February, wow. Never known it. Never known it. I can remember growing up in the uh, 60s up in Canada, and the 24th of February was my mom's birthday, and it was close to that weekend that they would have the winter Rama. And the ice in the bay was about 18 inches thick. And the snow was about 18 feet thick. I mean, no, not quite. But, I mean, we had a lot of snow. And that was deep winter. Deep winter. So to have temperatures reach in the 60 degrees in February, even before the 24th of February, man, that's just good. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Have a great day. Remember, God loves you. I love you too. Bye for now. I'll speak to you tomorrow.